this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and what are all these things, right? Life is supposed to be getting simpler with cables, but it's kind of not. So this is five minutes on tech, everything you need to know about USB-C and Thunderbolt 3. A lot of you have written to me and asked and are kind of confused about the whole thing and what you can do, what you can't do, what's currently available. So we're going to find out now. So the first and most important point, USB-C refers to a connector type. This is where folks get confused. The data protocol, the kinds of things you can connect to it are a separate thing. It's a very convenient little thing because it's, well, it's very teeny, so it allows for smaller smartphones and tablets and all that sort of thing. And it's bi-directional. That means there's no putting it in the wrong way, unlike the traditional USB-A cable where it has to go in one way, not the other way. So you're always never get it right the first time, right? So that's what's good about USB-C. It can support more than one kind of protocol for communication. One is USB. So we have the USB-C Gen 1, Gen 2 thing we'll get into. And the other is it can also do Thunderbolt 3. So that leads to confusion. At first it seems great. One port does a bunch of things, but that's a confusing port. You look at it, you look at a device that has one of the ports and you say, oh, does that mean it's Thunderbolt 3 or does it just have USB-C? And now is it USB-C Gen 1 or USB-C Gen 2? Oh boy. So let's figure out what all of those things mean. First off, we have a lot of lovely laptops right here these days that have these kind of ports on it. The Dell XPS 15, for example, has a port. We have the Acer Swift 7 that we reviewed that has two of them. Nice, beautiful, skinny laptop. And that's what allows it to be very skinny, just like the HP Spectre non-X360 is very skinny because th this, these ports are absolutely tiny. Then we have the big old Acer Predator gaming laptop that has Thunderbolt 3 on board too. The Dell also has Thunderbolt 3. So how do you figure all this out? First off, we now have what's called USB-C Gen 3.1, Gen 1, and Gen 2. The USB IF organization came up with the name change here. So traditionally USB 3.0, it's been around forever, the little blue traditional port that you have on your laptops. That's USB 3.0. It's now called 3.1. Go ahead, figure that out. So if you have your basic USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 port, means it does exactly the same stuff that USB 3.0 did in terms of speed, 5 gigabit per second. The faster USB-C 3.1, originally called, is now called Gen 2. That's 10 gigabit per second. So two different speeds. You have to read the specs on the laptop. When we review them, we always talk about whether it's Gen 1 and Gen 2. Typically, you don't see Gen 2 unless the laptop also supports Thunderbolt 3. That's just the way it happens to, to roll. Now, if you do have USB-C Gen 1 port, you know, the old 5 gigabit per second, there's still some good things because they usually support USB power delivery 2.0. That means bi-directional power. Instead of your laptop can charge your smartphone, it means that it can be charged via USB-C, the laptop itself, which is why you can take my uh, Google Pixel charger, for example, and charge this laptop right here. Now, most of the time, laptop manufacturers have implemented this, so you can actually go ahead and do it. You have to have a compatible charger, like the one meant for your recent high-end smartphone with a USB connector on it. And there's a power limit. There's a reason why I say the Dell XPS 15 that we have here can't be charged over USB-C because it tops out at 100 watts. Ultrabooks with 45 watt chargers, well, that's fine. But for something like the XPS 15 or a gaming laptop that needs a 120 watt charger or a 240 watt charger, you can't do that over USB-C. So hopefully that clarifies a little of that. And of course, it can charge your smartphone. It can charge your tablet too because it's bi-directional. So we have that. And even the low USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 port can, via adapters, like we have the, the Dell USB-C adapter here that has HDMI on board, Ethernet, all that sort of thing. We have this little Satechi thing with USB ports and an SD card slot. There are ones with DisplayPort adapters. All of them can drive monitors out too. So it's versatile in the way that USB actually was too, though there weren't as many adapters. You can do Ethernet, you can do DisplayPort, you can even, depending on the adapter, like this Dell adapter does do it, you can do HDMI 2.0. 2.0 is nice because it does a 4K monitor at 60 hertz refresh rate, better than the 30 hertz refresh rate of older HDMI standards. Now let's talk about Thunderbolt 3. Again, the same physical connector usually comes with USB Gen 2 on the same port as well. <laughs> people get really hooked on this and they won't buy a laptop if it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 and all that sort of thing. And guess what? Thunderbolt 3 has been on laptops for about a year now and there's still not very much you can actually do with it. 
The Thunderbolt 3 peripherals that are out now are pretty limited. You, you see things like high-end hard drive arrays or SSD arrays for pros. Uh, the Razer Core, which is an external graphics amplifier that uses Thunderbolt 3, is available to consumers. But that's still just about the only interesting thing you can do, and that's expensive. That's 500 bucks for the graphic amplifier, which is just the box. Just the box that holds the graphics card and there's a power supply inside of it as well. Then you got to buy the graphics card. So if you want an NVIDIA GTX 1070, you're looking at around 425 bucks. If you want a 1080 card, you're looking at over $500. So you're looking at $1,000 just to get better graphics on your laptop. You're halfway to just, gee, I might as well just buy a better gaming laptop instead, right? So that's why we don't do a whole lot of tests with Thunderbolt 3 right now. And Thunderbolt 3 is not quite created equal. The XPS 15 has two PCIe lanes. Four would be the maximum possible, which we have on this Acer Predator 17 here, a big gaming laptop. There's more room in there. Often they say on the motherboard, there's not enough room for them to implement Thunderbolt 3 using all the PCIe lanes. So you might not be getting all the speed from that graphics amplifier either. That's probably the place where you would want the most speed possible. Confusing enough? Yes, it is. So for now, I'm not too worried about Thunderbolt 3 on laptops in a couple of years. Maybe there'll be more things to do and more affordable things to do, but right now there just isn't a lot. Then there's a 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. It has four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Only two of them are full speed, 40 gigabit per second. The other two are only 20 gigabit per second. You see how crazy making all this is? And again, combined with the fact that there isn't so much you can do with it right now and on the horizon, there isn't so much. No. Also, when it comes to things like the Razer Core, watch out, there are some other PCIe external Thunderbolt 3 boxes, like the Akidio Thunder 3, which is about $250. And people have written to me and said, hey, should I get this instead of the Razer Core, right? It's half the price. Well, read the fine print on these boxes because it says specifically it does not support graphics cards. So you could put a PCIe SSD card in there. Not really a very interesting thing to do, right? Though there, there are a few things that you could do, but read the fine print because the graphics amplifier needs to have a power supply sufficient to drive a gaming graphics card. Well, those are usually requiring at least 350 watts up to 500 watts. So that adds to the cost of it. And they need a pretty beefy fan because we all know graphics cards get hot. So hopefully you have a better idea of what all of this means about how important any one of these connectors are and what you can do with them. And for right now, if you're looking at USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 versus Gen 2, the speed difference will be compelling if when we get to 8K monitors and also when, when you know, these kinds of things, USB-C based SSDs get faster and they start being Gen 2, then you get even faster data transfer speeds. Right now, this Samsung T3, which is pretty fast and pretty popular, a little teeny SSD, it's still Gen 1, so there you have it.